Before the pandemic, isolation was something we associated with older adults in the confines of an institution or living independently in a state of retirement. But with the pandemic upon us, isolation affects even more people and age groups. To share some wisdom on how to maintain the ability to connect while staying healthy is a wellness coach from one of the care facilities in the Boston area run by Hebrew Senior Life. We'd like to welcome Susan Flashner Feynman. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Susan. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here with you and um, would love to share uh, my knowledge and expertise in this area with your viewers. Susan, I, in brief, I called you a wellness coach. Uh, tell me what wellness means and, and the population you work with that you're trying to help. Yeah. Well, that's a great question. Um, I think wellness means the same thing really for all people. There are um, a number of different dimensions of wellness. When we think of wellness, what I have uh, found over the years is that many people think of physical wellness and wellness really uh, goes into emotional wellness, uh, educational wellness, uh, spiritual wellness, financial wellness. There are somewhere between six and eight different dimensions that really incorporate what we consider to be our own well-being. And when all of those are in somewhat of a balance in our lives, that's when we feel the best. And uh, my work is really helping uh, the people that I work with, the residents that I work with, look inside and, and um, look at their various areas of wellness and um, help guide them to developing a, um, a balanced perspective and then perhaps even setting some goals that might help, uh, help them reach what really matters to them. That's an interesting distinction because I, I've seen this on, on your website here. That it's the difference between uh, what's the matter with you and what matters the most. Um, Correct. So, so how do you get people to shift focus? Good question. Well, I think the, the benefit of having a coach be part of this conversation allows for that opportunity to shift the focus. Um, we tend to... Uh, think of ourselves, um, as I said earlier, much more in physical terms. And um, although Western medicine, I think, is changing, oftentimes the focus tends to be on what's not working, what do you need to fix, um, what medicines are going to help you fix those things. And with the guidance of the coach, we're, we're, our philosophy in um, Vitalize 360, which is um, the name that we call the platform that we work on is very positive based, uh, based on uh, positivity. So that that doesn't mean that things aren't going well in your life. It doesn't mean that there are things that you want to work on. But when words do matter, and when we tell ourselves that I'm working on, um, working on my health, I'm working on my fitness, I'm doing things that are going to bring me um, closer to where I want to be so that I'm feeling good about myself each and every day, um, even in small ways, that is the way to really shift from looking at what's not working and what's not, what is the matter to what matters most. Well, one example, and I know this predates uh, the pandemic, I, I think there is an older woman who wanted to go on a trip across the country. Uh, she ended up settling for going to a concert at Symphony Hall in Boston. I know you can't do that now, but, um, but what was such a big deal about going to a concert and getting into a position where you could go? Um, well, for her, some of her goals were more physical. Um, there were two goals. One was more physical in that she really uh, didn't feel comfortable getting on the bus or getting into the taxi, um, maneuvering once she got to the concert hall. Um, and she believed that if she had more physical strength, she would feel more confident about taking on that, um, that journey into Boston. And so um, one of her goals was to meet with the fitness staff, which she did. And she gave herself about three months before that concert um, had started or was going to um, appear in Boston. And in those three months, she worked on her leg strength. She worked on her upper body strength. 
And another goal that she set for herself was that she felt, um, even with the strength, she wanted a partner, um, someone to go along with her. And she did have, um, she didn't want a family member to go. She wanted to go with someone that she could um, count on that was more of an aide. And she was able to find someone that she knew about who had served as an aide for another family member and invited that person to go along with her. So it was in the end, a really successful journey. She was able to go there safely, maneuver the stairs, get into her seat and get back to Orchard Cove uh, with a success and really enjoying the concert that evening. You know, um, we've gotten used to using the word isolation. It's something that results from getting older or being in declining health. But for a lot of people, they're not older. Their physical health isn't really going downhill that much. What is it about isolation we have to be careful about? Well, I think with isolation, what brings um, along with isolation is not having that human contact and not having that human interaction. Um, and I think of the importance of connectivity. Um, and oftentimes, connectivity happens face to face. And we have learned that uh, through COVID and through the isolation that it has brought, that the face to face was not really a reality for, and it still is not always a reality. So what can we do to um, adapt to that situation and still connect to our neighbors, still connect to our best friends? If you are fortunate enough to have a computer and have the, um, the background to understand how to do a Zoom call, um, how to, um, do a FaceTime call. Those are some of the things that you can do to really maintain that connection. And the the good old telephone is just as good. And um, and I know many of the members that I work with or residents that I work with in at Orchard Cove, day to day are calling their neighbors, are calling their loved ones. And that connection can really help to bridge um, I think bridge that um, that gap that we feel during this time of isolation. Well, I know that's uh, an idea of, of what we can do, but how has it been actually? You, you've been practicing this, living with this day to day as your is your job. How how well has it been working? You think? I think it's working really well um, at Orchard Cove, where I do work. We set up a uh, a call center. We have about 10 Vitalize 360 coaches, and we brought them all together um, sometime in mid to late March. And we decided that um, as an adaptation to the coaching that we um, have been doing, we would set up a call system where we would call residents. In the beginning, we were calling them two or three times a week. Um, we were fortunate to have as many staff as we did there were about 230 independent living residents that received calls. Um, and the calls were a way to connect, a way to, um, to really help the residents determine how they could maneuver this new situation of living their life um, somewhat in isolation, but definitely not leaving their apartments. And I do think that number one, knowing that there was someone there that they could connect with that would help them navigate that process made all the difference to them. Of course, the other thing that I was thinking of here is that before the pandemic, when I visited institutions to see relatives, uh, there was always a sort of a structure going on. Every day there, there was a concert downstairs or there was a talk, um, there was exercise or, or music. I mean, you talk to the relatives, uh, you know, yeah, they, they were sad to see you go, but there was something going on in your life. Why is that so important? Engagement has been proven to show that that affects your health more than almost anything else. Social engagement and social connections, um, believe it or not, uh, impact your health more than 50% of anything else that could impact your health. Um, and so that is why it's so important. We're, we're social beings at heart, and we do find different ways to present our social beings. Some people do it 
uh, more remotely and enjoy not having the face-to-face. -face. But most people really love the face-to-face. -face. And, and most of the people that move into communities love the idea of having this opportunity to be amongst other people. Um, so there's, it's, a, it's a real important aspect is um, having that capacity to make connections in some way and reaching out as we did to our residents to help them navigate that new process. Susan, finally, I, I know there's some information about your wellness program online. So if people want to know more, is there any way they can maybe check that out? Um, I'm going to give you the name of, uh, it's called Vitalize 360. If you Google Vitalize 360 at Orchard Cove, you will find um, a great deal more information um, about what we do at Orchard Cove and Vitalize 360 and um, a way to connect with someone there to hear more about it.